great movements that happen around the world are not driven by logic. They are driven by emotion and passion. And so if you actually want to move people and get them to overcome their inertia, getting them motivated around their emotions is central. If you're trying to have an impact, tell a story rather than just the facts. Hey, it's Nikki Llewellyn Gregory, and you're on Gut Plus Science. You're in for a fast-paced, storytelling, action-item-rich leadership growth experience. I hope you make this podcast a habit. I consider it a leadership mentoring tool. Learning together makes us better together, and that is how we change the world around us. Let's get to it. Storytelling. It's a difference maker. It's a change maker. The last episode I recorded, I told a story that I heard when I was 26 years old, and I remember details like the sprinkles and the cherry on the cupcake. As leaders, we have the responsibility to influence people. Stories influence. Stories make change and therefore impact. Today, my friend Susan Linder, who has dedicated her life to the work of storytelling, is with us to package up some key nuggets and inspiration that will help us elevate our storytelling abilities. Susan, welcome. I want to know, why is storytelling overlooked or underutilized? Good storytellers are rare. So what's your take on why isn't storytelling a priority in school and basic leadership learnings? It's a real crime because as little kids, this is how we talk to one another. And frankly, it is the way that knowledge has been transferred from generation to generation, even before we were literate. So this is the way the human brain receives and processes information, and we are overlooking the greatest tool that Mother Nature ever gave us, the ability to assimilate information and connect with other human beings using storytelling as the bridge that connects us and connects us to big ideas. The reason why it's been drummed out of us is because we have this just the facts jack mentality when we get to the boardroom. And it comes from a lot of command and control structures of management. It comes from a lot of military discipline that says, give me three bullet points and an Excel spreadsheet, get to the point, and let's move on. Stanford's done the research for us. We know that within six minutes of leaving that meeting room where we're just hearing statistics, we're just hearing the bullets, we've forgotten it. So storytelling is an executive's dream because it is a memory-making device. If you're trying to have an impact, tell a story rather than just the facts, Jack. Oh, that's so good. And I want to dive into that more, especially this data side versus like storytelling. One thing that just came to mind is I think people get wrapped up in perfection when it comes to storytelling. It's like, oh, unless I have every detail and I tell it exactly as someone else told it. So just spoiler alert, we're going to make sure we hit that on the head in case you've been wired that way. Stop it. Tell your own story, be you. And so let's talk about all the reasons why storytelling matters. What does storytelling do that data doesn't? And don't get me wrong, for all my data scientists out there, I love data. Don't leave data out of the story, but you have to incorporate data into a story if you want it to work. We don't just eat a chocolate bar and call it chocolate cake. It's the other ingredients around it that make it so sumptuous, delicious, creamy, flavorful, memorable, yummy, right? Let's talk about why storytelling works. Let's talk about what's happening in the brain. If you've ever gone to see a horror movie, you know that you are having a physiological response when your heart starts racing and your palms start sweating. Something is happening in the body. So when you tell a story, you are inducing great chemicals in the brain that allow us to feel a story. Data can't do that. So when you tell a story, we are releasing, let's say it's a horror movie like cortisol and adrenaline is coursing through the body. When you're telling a story of great triumph and admiration or inspiring people, you're creating a rush of dopamine and serotonin, oxytocin, these incredible chemicals that allow a story to actually enter the body and stick. It stays with you. So when you are able to play chemist with your audience, you are ensuring that the information you are giving people stays with you. So that's number one. It actually physically gets into us. Let's talk about what happens in the brain when we're telling a story. If I'm telling you that story about chocolate cake, what's happening in your brain when you're listening 
is you are going through the memory files, opening up Nikki's filing cabinet and looking for every time that you have had chocolate cake. And you are connecting with me because you know what it looks like, smells like, tastes like. We're engaging the five senses and your personal memory banks. That immediately says, I understand what you're talking about, which data doesn't do sometimes. I might not understand the data that you're presenting. But chocolate cake allows me to go, I've had cake, you've had cake. Now I can go forward and get deeper. So making a connection around a memory, around a topic we all get and understand and are engaged with allows us to get deeper and deeper and deeper into the data, more and more complex topics. So even if you're presenting something really hard, telling a story allows our listeners to follow with us on the journey. And then the last piece is if you're trying to communicate a theme, maybe you are a leader that is trying to get more employee engagement. Maybe you're trying to get people rallied and excited about a strategy. Remember first that a business strategy is a fiction. It's a story that we tell people and it doesn't become real until someone else executes it. So if we want to get people really engaged, we want to guide them to a theme. So if our theme for the quarter is growth, tell me a story about growth and I will get on board faster than you just saying, we have to hit these numbers. We have to hit this market. I need expansion on these four products. Tell me a story about where you grew something, where you made something happen. And suddenly now I'm engaged to make your story mine. And that's when a leader and a follower become in sync with one another. So it's really important, even if we're trying to communicate a larger theme, zoom out and do something macro, the story starts with your micro. Tell me something that happened to you, and now I'm willing to follow you as I find my own story. So I'm playing out an example in my head. Let's even make it a little tougher. Everyone's spread out all across the globe, and you're on Zoom. And you're like, how do we build connection here and have everyone take ownership in this meeting? Let's say that the topic that we're working on is innovation. So, hey, everyone, I want to take three minutes for you to reflect on a time that you felt innovative, an experience that you had when you felt innovative. And they start to get that emotion and that feeling, and then everyone gets to chat it in or they get to share it. And now everybody has a part and you are engaged from the beginning of the meeting because you're meeting at that micro level of your own personal experience, right? Are we hitting it on the head? A thousand percent, Nikki, way to go. I absolutely nailed it. And you know, you can experience that, right? I remember the first time I held my iPhone. I remember peeling the plastic off the top and going, oh my God, it's really here. A phone, a PDA, all the things that the iPhone did the first time we did it. I think the phone is the least function I use on my actual iPhone. But that experience of like, you know, maybe waiting online to get the iPhone or, you know, whatever that was, you decide as the leader what emotion you want to build into it. So feeling innovative makes me feel cool. It makes me feel at the cutting edge. It makes me feel special. It makes me feel like I know a secret that nobody else knows. What is it that feeling when you want to convey now innovation? What aspect, what facet of that diamond do you as a leader want to pull out? So get everybody on board with innovation and then you call out the thing that matters most. Yes. So stories elicit emotion and emotion builds connection with people, topics, and causes. We're going to get a little bit deeper here in a minute on like the connection with people and storytelling. I'm pumped about that. You know, in your work every day, you're working with leaders and especially innovative leaders to build in storytelling and to tell those stories. And I'm curious, a leader that has transformed a workplace because of storytelling well, tell us about that. Ones that have really transformed a workplace around story get that it's not enough just to show up and present the thing. What we know as human beings, as much as we'd love to deny it at work, all of us are driven by emotion. So if you want to motivate people to do anything, you have to get them to feel something. Great movements that happen around the world are not driven by logic. They are driven by emotion and passion. And so if you actually want to move people and get them to overcome their inertia, getting them motivated around their emotions is central. 
So before we ever start telling a story, I always ask leaders the question, what do you want your listener to think, to feel, to do when you're done speaking? And what do you want them to tell the next person that they should do? Because if you're really driving innovation, if you're trying to create some kind of motion or create change in an organization, the only way that happens is if someone else tells the story that you told, or they tell a story that they've made their own and move that forward. So an organization that's transformed by storytelling recognizes that the humans around the table are emotional beings and says, how do I tap into the emotions that matter to them? So can we ask the question first, what is the context before I ever start the content? So for example, in a really storytelling driven environment, leaders will say, what's the context I'm operating in right now? We just had layoffs. We just had promotions. We're running into third quarter. How do my listeners around the table feel right now? Are they nervous? Are they scared? Are they upset? Are they thrilled? Are they crushing it? Great. How do I capitalize or at a minimum address that emotion as I'm thinking about telling my story? Smart companies will say, okay, context before content. I get my people. Now I'm going to tell a story that resonates with the emotion in the room. Now I'm going to pair a theme that matters to these people. And my intention in telling the story is how do I make these people the hero? When I'm done talking, if I really want to influence people, drive change, and get them to act, what will make them feel like heroes? So oftentimes that story revolves around really thinking deeply about what will motivate people to move and take action. That is in their best interest, not yours, storyteller. Oh, that's so good. And then you have people who are engaged because they're moving for their own desire, as well as the organization's strategic goals or what have you. I am just thinking of a couple of ways that I'm going to practice this inserting my people as the hero in the story. And I'm going to report back to you on our next call. And I'm going to tell you how it goes. Because I'm like, oh, I've got a couple of things that I'm trying to make movement on. And I'm going to try that. Pro tip for people who really want to give this a shot is do a Google search on empathy maps. So this is a part of design thinking that says, anybody I'm trying to motivate, what do they care about most? And it asks six great questions. Two of the most important ones are, if I'm trying to create change or even create momentum inside of an organization, what is the pain my listener will experience if they do what I suggest? Because anybody having to do something different than their day-to-day will experience some kind of pain. Maybe it's even just time management. But what is the pain? What is the challenge? Maybe there's a huge reputational risk of following you into the great unknown. And the other is, what is in there for them to gain? At a minimum, you can answer two of these questions. What's the pain for my listener of following what you're prescribing? And what's the gain? And you need to make that part of the story sandwich about like, this is going to be hard. And by the way, no great story does not contain challenges and pain. Think of any story you've ever read that you love from the Bible to Star Wars. Luke is going through a lot of agony. That's true. So really acknowledge this is going to be hard. This could be a challenge. I know there's going to be difficulties along the way. I know we can get through it. Guess what's waiting for us on the other side? Now the game. So paint a picture of what the future will look like when you're done. If the people have followed you and accepted what you've prescribed, how will life get better for them not you. We're about to launch into some techniques that you have for us. I'm just reflecting so far on the power of storytelling. You know, it helps us remember. It's a memory-making device. It elicits emotion that builds connection to people, topics, and causes. It helps us to influence taking next steps and making change. Talking about storytelling and its ability to build connection, what does that look like? There might be somebody here that's like, Never thought about it for that, but I want to listen up on the techniques because I need to build connection. What do you mean by that? You know, it's so fascinating. During the pandemic, I found that doing surveys after giving workshops on innovation storytelling, that one of the biggest takeaways was greater connection among employees. And I thought, that's interesting. I'd never really thought about storytelling as a connective tissue 
around an office. But when you get people like you just said, Nikki, about tell us a story about when you felt innovative. The word is felt, not when you bought something cool and innovative, right? But how when you felt innovative, feeling is the key word. So suddenly people are sharing stories they've never shared before because you decided to bring out a theme that was based in emotion, not doing. The emotional connection that comes from that is the ability to be authentic and vulnerable. So for example, if I'm trying to tell a story about persistence, it's been a really tough year. Our balance sheet doesn't look great, but we have to persist. And I tell the story about how I failed at my driver's license test three times before I finally got it. I can talk about all the effort I went through. I can talk about my cranky examiner who was in the car with me. And I can talk about my big pie in the sky dream of getting my mom's brown 1989 Ford Fairmont with a gold interior. Hideous. And yet (laughs) that was my big goal, but I can feel the emotion of what it's like to fail. I can feel what it's like to try again and persevere. Wow. What a prize, but boy, what it meant to me to have freedom, the ability to go to the mall, the ability to pick up my date. So the connections that we make are around not just my experience of persistence, but all the little details that connect us as human. Because all of us have persevered for a goal, but it's the funny little things along the way that actually create the connection. It's not just keep moving on troops. Well, anytime you hear someone share their journey of creating their TED talk or a speaking coach talking about their tips, it's can you connect with your audience through stories? So the more we share of ourselves, vulnerability has been such a hot thing since Brene Brown put such a highlight on it. So many of us have embraced it. Vulnerability is our story. And the more we tell that, somebody else is like, oh, I feel a connection to you because I've had that. Or now I feel comfortable to start a conversation with you because we have something to talk about, which is just so powerful. So, okay, we want to go into some storytelling techniques. Walk us through some techniques. Before you ever start telling the story, what do you want your audience? And really write this down. What do you want them to think, feel, do, and say when you're done telling the story? What do you actually want people to leave the room remembering? So thinking is about remembering because again, we are going from meeting to meeting, goal to goal. What do you need people to remember when you are done speaking? What do you want them to feel? So can you pre-program? And I do this when I'm presenting a slide deck. I will go through all 10 slides and I will assign an emotion to each slide. I will know what brain chemical I intend to trigger as part of my discussion. So if you are making a PowerPoint deck that's an eight font with 14 boxes on it that barely anyone can read, you've lost us, not emotion driven. So even if you need to put lots of data on the screen, what do you want people to feel as they're thinking about it or reading it? Uh Get clear about that because that is what is happening in the listener's body and they take that body with them if you need them to act on it. So next up is what do you actually need them to do and have you explicitly stated it? So when we're telling this story, how do we rally people around the action? So are you really clear about your game plan? I need everyone to X. Now what's the motivator that gets people excited about doing it? And again, go back to your empathy map about what's the challenge for them, mention it, and the benefit. And if you're feeling like that kind of challenge portion of the story could be a big hurdle, if you're making a big ask, we use a technique in storytelling called breadcrumbing. And it's very powerful. If you need people to change their behavior and do something they've never done before, prove to them that they already have. So get people to look backwards and say, remember 10 years ago when we were selling software through consultants only? And now people are downloading our software from the web directly. What shifted for us? We made everything super user-friendly. It used to be the consultants did all that hard work with another expert on the other side, but now our software is very user-friendly, super compatible. That was a huge shift for us in business model, in execution, in pricing, in every conceivable way. So get people to look backwards at what's been done before and that 
they've made smart investments, and they've gotten the job done. Prove to them it's possible to move into something challenging. So breadcrumbing is a phenomenal technique to do that. And then lastly, I would say, conclude your story with the win-win. What's in it for both of you if people move forward and do the thing that you ask of them? So it's not enough just that, you know, this is going to be so great for you. Mm. Prove to me that it's going to be great for both of us and we're going into this collective future together. So if you can make that point to how all of us share in the glory when you become the hero, then that's the real bonus. That's a real bonus. So good. I love these and excited to try them myself. Before we go, and I want to learn a little bit more about some exciting things that are happening in your world right now. You know, great leaders are ripple effectors. They take what they do and then they ripple it on others. What comes to mind around good storyteller leaders now taking and ripple affecting the ability to their people? Like how do we as leaders help our people become better? Storytellers. It's funny because I have leaders calling me and say, we need storytelling support here because I find my team is just retelling all of my stories. I want them to come up with stories of their own. (laughs) And so it's a little bit of training. It's a muscle that requires a little bit of work. So let's talk about how we can really do this. So a great leader ripples, and Kinsey says storytelling is among the top 40 leadership traits that every leader needs in this new era, especially connecting across time zones, as you said, and across different industries too. Let's talk about what the ripple effect is. The ripple effect is the ability to make a story move, especially if you're working in change or innovation of any kind. It needs momentum. So great stories have momentum behind them. If you follow the rules of the prophets, Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, Moses, all of them told us a fact, told us a story, told us the impact of the story. So if we look at people who told us stories 5,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, and we're still telling them today, the impact is getting the listener to make the story their own. So if you really want to get extra credit on your storytelling is before people leave the meeting, have them tell a story of how what you shared impacted them. Can you get one or two people, your early adopters, 12 close apostle friends who might have followed you into the wilderness? How can you get them to begin to share their stories? Tell me how you're going to make this change when you get back to your desk, when you get back to your office, when you start talking to your team in the field. So what's the story you'll tell? Compel others to make the story their own. It's the difference between liking something on social media and sharing it. When someone else is invested in your story, taking it in, making it their own, and now sharing either yours or theirs, that's the ripple. That's what going viral is, is saying, I believe in it so much, I'm willing to put my personal brand on it and share it too. That's the experience of it. That's what we want every great story to have a share factor. Thank you for bringing the ripple effect to life. I love that. Let's touch on the myths real quick. So the perfection myth, you want to tap into that one, what you see with that? People think they have to be Steven Spielberg when they're telling a great story, when in reality, we have very little time to tell good stories. Great stories have a beginning, middle, and end, and a theme So make sure you know before you start telling the story what the theme is, what it is that you want to get across, make sure what you leave the listener with. It doesn't have to be a perfect story. We just have to make sure that we're communicating with purpose. Don't leave the listener with, well, what was that all about? You might have told me a fantastic story about cake, but I don't know why you told it. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's in it for me. I don't know what I should tell the next person when I leave the room. So get clear about the theme when you're done telling the story. Other myths about storytelling, they have to be a full-length feature film, or I just have to get it out really quickly. You can tell a great story in four sentences. Make sure that it contains the context, where you're starting from and where your listener's starting from. Number two is the content. What is the big struggle and crisis that we need to get through? That's that tension that we build into the context. What is the breakthrough or the aha? And then finally, what's the cascading benefit? What's happening on the other side of shift or change? So even those four little plot points 
is important. And then lastly, if you really want to get good at storytelling, try to think of what makes it unique. If you can incorporate the five senses, this is the easiest way to connect with another listener. We all share in an experience of the five senses. So if I say something like, I want to wash that man right out of my hair, I can feel so many things in just that one sentence that makes me think about when I was in the shower, my last breakup, oh, that irritating date, right? whatever it may be. Those five senses are conjured really quickly. So use the five senses in order to connect with people because those little filing cabinets are going 100 miles an hour with that. Yes. So listeners, if you have enjoyed this as much as I have, I hope you at least take a nugget to go apply and strengthen your storytelling. But if you're like loving this like I do, go follow Innovation Storytellers. That's Susan's podcast and it's full of stories and just learnings around how to sharpen ourselves and all about innovation as the title shares. So we'll link out to that podcast in the show notes and you'll see this in the marketing and all that. It's just such a great episode. We've actually been promoting that through People Forward Network. We love the show. Susan, before we go to our break and learn a little bit more about the personal side of you, this is a huge personal note, but you have some exciting news. You've been working on something for a long time. What just came to be that's the big news? So I am really excited to announce that my book, Billion Dollar Storytelling, is going to be out at the beginning of 2024. I have been working on it for about four years now, and it's everything I've learned of working with from startups to Fortune 500 companies about how to tell amazing stories that get you that billion dollar buy-in. Whether we need to influence audiences or whether we need to push through a breakthrough idea, this is the guide that teaches you how to do it. Heck yes. Sign me up. I am so excited to read this. I'm ready to become a billion dollar storyteller. So awesome. Congratulations on that. We are excited to get behind you and glad that we've become friends at People Forward Network. So grateful for the time and knowledge that you shared today. We're going to take a quick break, hear from our sponsor, and then hear some of the personal side of you. I think we've got some cool things to learn and maybe some starts to stories that will begin new connections with our listeners because of what they learn about you. So we'll be right back. Shout out to the Talent Talks podcast by Titus. Show host Jonathan Reynolds, CEO of Titus Talent, brings a unique blend of fun, humor, and passion. Jonathan's vibrant energy shines through the microphone as he engages with every guest live, creating a captivating synergy. Jonathan collaborates with each guest to delve into topics that empower leaders to make optimal hiring and engagement decisions from a people first lens. You got to give this podcast a try. Talent Talks. All right, we're back on Gut Plus Science. So Susan Linder, you're up on our lightning rounds. These are just very fast, quick responses. And then, you know, when all these people are like, I want to know more, just hit her up. I'm about to give you her information to hit her up and have more of a conversation. So Susan, I know this is a hard one, but you get to pick one book to add to our ever-growing recommended reading list. Favorite book of all time or a favorite recent read for our leadership audience? What do you pick? Mm. Okay, I'm not a huge fiction reader, but I loved a new book called Lessons in Chemistry. It is this fantastic romp through the 1950s, a little bit of feminism, a little bit of chemistry, and a whole lot of introspection. Just amazing. And now it's going to be a show on Apple Plus, I just found out this morning. So super exciting. Definitely check it out. A new book for our list. We have not heard that one. Yay. Thank you. (laughs) Okay, Susan, favorite place in the whole world. Your soul feels connected there. I studied abroad when I was 19 in Costa Rica, and it still makes every bit of stress fall away from my body, and I just get reconnected with my 19-year-old self. Oh, I love that. I hope you have a trip on the books or you're planning one. (laughs) Uh, That's great. Okay, so an activity during your favorite days. What is that activity that you just love to have in those favorite days? Oh, I love to cook. And so I get lost in a great recipe and something bubbling on the stove and I can't help myself on quantity. I wound up giving it most of it away to my neighbors. They love it when I procrastinate. That is my favorite activity (laughs) when I'm trying to write my book and really just find up making brownies instead. (laughs) Oh, I love that. Yes. I share that hobby with you. I love it so much. It brings me (laughs) peace. Okay. So tell us about an experience that you had in your life that makes people say like, whoa, what? You did what? 
What is that? So when I lived in Central America, I wound up hitchhiking from Costa Rica through five countries and two war zones in Nicaragua and El Salvador, all the way up to the border of Mexico, 50 drivers, no problems. Okay. That is your next book. (laughs) (laughs) That is insane. Wow. How cool. I want to learn more about that. Yeah. That's what 19 looked like. 19 and stupid or brave. Oh, Brupid. wow. Brupid, I'll call it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Susan, before we go, can you let our listeners know the best way to connect with you from here? Oh, I would love to meet all of you on LinkedIn. Please go ahead and check out innovationstorytellers.com. Lots of tips and insights into how to tell phenomenal stories that really get you the resources and the runway and the recognition you deserve. Such a great episode today around storytelling for impact. Thank you so much, Susan. So many great takeaways. Here's my truth you can act on. Number one, storytelling creates connection and both begins and deepens relationships because our stories help us relate and bond with others. Connection to people, topics, and causes. And don't forget, people leverage these stories as a memory-making device. So the better we are at telling those stories and building that connection, the more that we're just locking into the memory part of our brains. Number two, know what you want your audience to think, feel, and do before you even start crafting your story. So in preparation, before even starting to record that story or tell that story, make sure that you know what you want your audience to think, feel, and do. And that's what you're going to be incorporating into the storytelling process. Number three, connect your story to the audience's challenges and benefits or aspirations tying to their motivations. They want to solve problems. They want to reach dreams or new levels or goals. Connect your story to that and just see the depth that happens with connection and really truly impacting your audience. And finally, number four, compel those around you to make the story that they then tell, the ripple effect of you telling a story and having them to then take it and make it their own. There's no perfection in storytelling. It is their version of the story. Help them understand what's most important and let them be their own in that. Let them do them. Compel others to make the story their own and go tell that story. We'll see you next time. We just left the world a little bit better. Now, go do something with it.